Hey guys, Harmony here. Uh, everybody has been asking me about how I do these amazing knots. On my wood grains. And I just started playing around, honestly. And they just turn out. You mess up, you could just... I mean, it's alcohol ink, so you can just wipe it off or blend it in and start over. There isn't really anything to be afraid of to mess up, but, um, and it seems like my knots get better and better every single time. So this seems to be a popular tumbler for me right now is baseball bats. And so I'm going to set you down and I'm going to try and show you on here. So I use caramel for my baseball bats. Um, from Tim Holtz. And for the middle, to just get it a little bit darker, I do have espresso. I have tried tiki wood, but tiki wood um, has some issues with turning green, and I'm not been too happy with that. When I epoxy it, it doesn't really turn back. So I take a Dixie cup and I just put a little bit of alcohol in here. I use a makeup brush that looks like this. I don't I think I got it from my boxy charm box. So um, it's a Luxy. It's a Luxy brush number five ten. Um, it says it's a foundation brush, but this has been by far the best brush I have ever used for any of my wood grains. I do like to have a variety of little ones handy as well. Uh, three of them are make brushes. This one I'll use sometimes to blot in the middle. Um, this one I'll use it to define some of the lines if I'm not liking it too much. And this one I'll use to spread a little bit. Um, so I keep those handy. But this is the main brush I use. Um, I emerge the brush inside the alcohol completely. I've been working with it this morning so you can already see it has alcohol ink on it. But then I take it and I blot it and I get most of it out because it soaks up the alcohol and it stays in the bristles because it is a makeup brush. It's not an art brush. You don't want it super wet, but you want it like damp. Um, and you literally start pushing the alcohol inks where you want them. So if I was to take this brush right now and went over this spot, it would literally just mess everything up. So. I am going to put my blobber over here and try and show you guys, let me see if I can get you a little higher, my stand broke, so put you on top of a cup and a wipey container and see if that works. So I start with taking my caramel and shake 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 I literally put one drop I don't always keep my hand in this sign I like to move it around and go up and down so that I get a different look I literally just put one drop on it and this already has the alcohol on it so I'm gonna spread it around and you just play with it everybody thinks it's hard to deal with but it really is not just spread it around if you don't like how it's starting to look you can add more alcohol to your brush dab it and you'll literally see the alcohol start to move you can literally take it away you could wipe it off with a paper towel you could do whatever you want um, the alcohol pushes it so literally just push it with the brush and you can see that you'll get some defined lines like right here how it's pushed it to the side and it's pushed it to the side 
So it's already starting to get a texture that I like. So I'm going to flip it around so I can see a little bit more. And I just start pushing the alcohol ink where I want it. I'll go back over another area I've already been in. My ink, my alcohol ran away. So I was working on the other one this morning until like 4 o'clock just because I was couldn't sleep. But I'm just getting a nice texture on this. I started with a white primer base that was sanded. And I don't want to go over my other section here because I've already done this area. I do have a little bit of white right here that is gotten pushed from yesterday when I was working with it. So I'm just going to go up and down to try and get some of the stuff that I have on my brush already going around. And you'll notice that I changed the brush in direction so I'll go sideways and turn this way. I'll even go this way and go this way because each direction I notice the bristles are a little bit different. So I'll get different strokes with each pass um, which gives it that you know baseball look so um, you just play with it until you get it how you like it and I try not to add too much alcohol because you all you're gonna be doing is just pushing the alcohol around if you want the alcohol ink to stay in an area like I'm getting pretty happy with how this is looking right here. Um, I notice if I start blowing on it as I'm rubbing it, it will start drying and it will stay in that section. So I'm pretty happy with that. And you just keep adding to it. So like how you have see these little grains in here. That's when I start using my makeup brush here. Um, eyebrow pencil or eyebrow brush works really well too because it's got that edge. And you can mess around with it too that way. So dab it in the alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And get most of it off. You need this one a little bit wetter than the other one but not super wet because you don't want to push your, all your ink to back to the white base. We just want to move some of the ink around. So this structure here, I use the small brush to get most of it. We start with the alcohol ink and just lightly go down. And what it's doing is it's pushing that ink and then I'm going to go right next to it so it creates a let, an edge in between where I just went. And then again, because you know the baseball bats have the lines in the grain. So I'll do that a few times. And you can see how it's creating this texture look. If I see that it needs some over here, I'll come over. But I try to take it all the way down so that it's all the way at the edge and matches with what is coming up into the grain. Sometimes I'll take it and start it from the bottom and go up into another one because I mean wood, that's what wood does, kind of like how, how I did here and it comes down from another one and goes into another one just like wood. There's a little tiny white spot here. Um, if you have alcohol, if you have uh, rubbing alcohol on your brush, you don't want to do what I just did. Um, I'm using some of the alcohol ink that is on here and just going over those two little white spots just to give that white some color. Because as you're pushing the alcohol inks around, it will expose your white base. 
So I'm pretty happy with those lines. I still have alcohol on this. It's still wet. And there's alcohol inks on here. So I'm just going to lightly go over this. And adding some color that's already on my brush to the spots that I just went over with my little brush. Very ever so lightly. You don't want to go over it hard at all because this still has a little bit of alcohol on it. So you don't want to rub off what you just did. So I'm pretty happy with this section now. So I'm going to come over here and create a knot over here. I try to keep my knots a little bit more structured. I don't like to have just knots anywhere. So this one, this knot comes in from both directions and meets in the middle. This one I'll probably go towards the bottom and probably bring it into the bottom. And so for that I'm going to flip the cup around this way. Being careful not to have your cup on your blotting because if that has alcohol in it and you have anything on the other side it will mess it up. I like to work in suctions, walk away from it and come back. So I want to start a knot in this area. So a little bit of alcohol, brush, blot it. And this knot is going to come over and go to the side. So I'm going to, so I've got one there, I'm going to have one here. So I'm going to brush it and you just brush ever so lightly. And then I'm going to brush up because remember this knot is going to be on this side and going towards the bottom. So all I'm doing is literally pressing or pushing the alcohol ink, manipulating it in the direction I want it to go. And you can start to see that it's creating ridges is what you want on the side. And I like to pull it up into this so it matches with the wood grain. It doesn't look like I just put a blob there. And you just keep pushing. Uh, you can do it this way as well if you're trying to create a big section. I turn my brush sideways since I'm working in a small section here. But as you can see, it gets smaller and smaller as you're going and look there's a piece of glitter that just happened to fly from somewhere and you'll just keep pushing until you're happy with it this one I'm going to keep pushing over the edge down there because I want to pull it into the bottom but, you know, every time you come up here, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. So I notice how the ridge is only happening on one side. I'm going to flip this so that I can push on this side too and get the ridge on this side. Once you start noticing you have a white space there, you're not really having any more to push. My brush is getting a little dry. I will take my caramel, literally one drop. And you kind of want to hold it there for a little bit, not too long, but you don't want to let it go all crazy all over the place. And just take your brush and swipe it into the direction that you want. And you'll see it starts creating that structure of that knot that you're looking for. And now I'm starting to get ridges on this side and I've got ridges on this side. It's a very time consuming process. I'm a perfectionist, so for me to get this took me three hours. But I was bored and had nothing else to do and I didn't like how it came out first, so I literally alcoholed it, scrubbed it off, and started over last night because I was just pissed at other situations happening in my home right now with my daughter and I just said 
whatever, and start it over. So it's okay. Alcohol inks are very forgiving. Don't be scared of them. Um, and actually, I'm liking how this structure is happening right here. So I may not take it into the bottom. I might. I don't know. But it's. I like how it's turning out right now. You just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And you notice how it's kind of pushed only to this section. It's not going. You keep trying to pull it down. And that's when you get that structure of that wood knot. Come back up here. Do the same thing. And it's kind of dried out, so it's not really being pushed anymore anywhere. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of alcohol ink. One drop. Try to keep it in the middle. doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to take this one to the bottom because the last one I took to the top. I don't want it to really go any more than that. So I'm going to start blowing on it with my mouth as I'm pushing it. And that gives it kind of the streaks in it while you're pulling the brush through it. Because it's drying the alcohol so the ink's going to stay where you asked it to stay. And then we're going to do another drop. And you want to, you don't even squeeze the bottle. Don't squeeze the bottle because then you get way too much. And that's why yesterday I thought I had it, my knot over here perfect. And I accidentally squeezed the bottle and too much of the espresso came out and uh, screwed up the whole knot. So I started over. You know, sometimes they say don't. It's another piece of glitter. It's supposed to be a guy cup. I don't want glitter on it. Does anybody else put disclaimers on their business cards or their labels, like their care instructions, may contain random pieces of glitter. I'm so tempted to do that. And just keep pushing it until you get it how you want it. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of espresso just to darken it up a little bit. And mind you, this suction here around the knot is nowhere near complete. I eventually want it to look like this. I try to get my knots in the locations I want, and then I'll go back in with my little brushes and this brush and a little bit of alcohol, the tiniest amount ever, so I don't mess up my knots, and then come in and work around it and get this beautiful texture around it. So I'm going to take the tiniest little bit of espresso, also Tim Holtz. Sorry, it's blurry, guys. This one you want to be careful with because, I mean, like, you, if you don't squeeze, don't squeeze it. I'll let it sit for a minute, or not for a minute, but for a couple seconds and blow on it. And it kind of thickens it up a little bit. And, again, just start pushing it where you want it to go. Notice how I didn't put any more alcohol in this. It has enough in the bristles to get you quite a bit. Unless I'm really wanting to move the structure of the alcohol ink, um, I don't start adding more alcohol, rubbing alcohol to my brush. And then I'm going to come back in and do some caramel. As you can see, my knot is kind of turning out really nice. Tiniest bit ever, again, because we're getting towards the middle. Blow on it, and you can see it kind of the alcohol ink structure changing as the alcohol dries. And again, just push it. Remember, you're the boss, you tell it where to go. It's one, th one thing about crafting, you can. Create and not have it talk back to you for the most part.
So that's literally all you're doing. You're just pushing the alcohol inks where you want it to go, and then I'm just darkening up um, the middle as I go. Sometimes when you get to this middle part, it gets difficult. See, like I just messed it up. It made me mad because it gave me too much of a big drop. If this happens, um, sometimes it happens. I just keep pushing it until I get it back where I want it to. It's not a big deal. A little too white right here for me. I have some of that ink on here still, so I'm going to go in and brush it around in this area where the knot's at, just giving it some color in a section that was white. And you can see it, like, you know, add some more definition to the knot. So when you get towards the middle and you have, I sometimes have that issue where it dropped out too much and I'm in a small section I want to work with. I have issues with that sometimes. So what I'll do is I'll just take something, usually random what I have, and take a drop of alcohol ink and um, just take a drop of it and put it on top of something, which I just happen to have a color street container right here and then I'm going to dip my brush the tip of the brush in it and then work with it that way so I'm not adding any more to this I noticed that some of the alcohol inks when you do it when you put a drop straight on it you know because it reacts with what's underneath that it, it's um reacts a little too much and messes up how you had your knot in the middle. Makes its own decisions on where it's going. So I'm going to come in with my little brush. So I've got this brush here that I use sometimes. And just blot the middle. <laughs> I don't think I need a little bit darker, so I'm gonna blot it on my. I guess I could buy myself a palette. That would work better. Same thing, I've got some extra color on here and come in and just touch up my knot on the sides. <clears throat> well, oh, this knot is pretty much done. I guess when you're not pissed off, it takes less time. But I did a lot of layers to this one, as you can see. So there's a lot of ridges on this one. Um, I put a little bit of alcohol on there. And I'm just going to come in and just... Pull it down a little bit more. And then I'll pull it up a little bit more. So, <clears throat> don't be afraid to mess around with uh, alcohol inks. I personally like to try and stay away from tiki wood. I don't know why, but it's just... Um, not friendly for some reason when you go to either epoxy it or um, seal it. I've heard some people seal it 
this after they're done with Mod Podge. I personally haven't done them that. I'm afraid that it's gonna blemish it or make it hazy. I have gone straight from letting this sit for 24 to 48 hours and epoxied straight over it and it's been fine but you do get some fish eyes because it <clears throat> likes to repel even after it's dried and sat for a couple days. Um, I think it just really depends on the location of where you live too and your environment that you're in. Um, you know, different things work for different people. Some people use that Krylon like triple glaze or triple thick, not triple thick. Um, that spray sealer. Some people don't seal. I just, in all my experience, I have tried triple thick, which is okay, but that gives it kind of a hazy look to it too. Um, I did do a wood grain once, and my first wood grain, and I sealed it with triple thick, and it did just fine. There was no problems with it at all. And then the second one I did, and I sealed with triple thick. I don't know, if maybe I didn't let it sit too long. Oh, that's the one that had tiki wood in it. And it turned green. It kind of turned back after 48 hours, but it just didn't look right or natural it was weird so see how i started rubbing there a little bit too much and it's pulling the ink with it because i dabbed more alcohol in here so i'm just going to go back the other direction and get over that section but literally wood grains are the most easiest and friendly user friendly I mean thing that you can do because how many things can you in the craft world can you manipulate and redo if it doesn't work without having any repercussions only repercussion is if you don't like it you can just take rubbing alcohol literally and wipe it off with a paper towel uh, it will stain the cup which I've done that and that cup that had triple thick on it that I didn't like I literally peeled the triple thick off which is odd because it peeled right off and then I took rubbing alcohol and cleaned off the whole cup and it left like a, a very faint tinted cup with um, like it was dyed the cup was dyed ultimately and uh, but it looked like a wood grain it's kind of funny, but I just reused it. I didn't. I didn't respray it. I just reused it, and it, it turned out fine. That's the one I used for my Arizona Diamondbacks one, and it turned out perfect. So I just added a little bit more alcohol ink or alcohol to my brush, dabbed it, because the middle's getting rough to move around. So I'm going to try and get my little brush in here, get it wet, alcohol, and then I'm going to dab most of it out. And you want to be very light handed when you do this because it's pretty much done. I don't want to mess it up anymore. I just need to fix the middle and get the middle to look a little bit more, I don't know natural <laughs> there we go but once I started dabbing in alcohol inks it's fun because you can do wood grains in any color I think my next wood grain is going to be turquoise Maybe some pink. But. And then I also like to come in around this and do some white 
lines up just to make the knot stick out. Staying away from your main structure of your knot. And just come around and You don't want to go line over line, you just get next to it, and then I go around it ever so lightly. Definitely not hard handed at all because you don't want to push too much ink. But as you can see, it's like creating that structure around the knot to make it look more like a knot. I'm just adding some definition in there. Sometimes I blot, sometimes I don't. In this section, I need to push some more alcohol ink. But rule of thumb is always to at least blot it after grabbing the alcohol because they are makeup brushes. So you don't pull too much. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to stay away from this structure because I already did that. Notice I have the opening of the cup this way. I flipped it around so I could get in there and get more control. And then I'm going to flip it back this way so I can look at it and go up this direction too. So I still have a little bit of alcohol ink on here. I'm going to go over it very so lightly. You don't want to go over it while your brush is wet when it's mostly dry. Um, just to fill in these areas with some color because I've still got color on my brush. And then there's that beautiful knot. So knots are really easy. Don't be scared of them. Just play around. I literally just went like this and up like this. and So I got the ridges that I wanted with a dark line um, going between two colors. Um, and you will find your your hand favoring one side more than the other and you'll get more ridges So to correct that I just flip the cup around and start working with the ridges on the other side going up in the other direction And then coming down and that way you get the brushes strokes even on each side so you get your ridges I mainly get try, try to get the ridges first and then start working towards the middle um, But they're pretty easy um, How I created this structure here With this is just ever lightly. So let me get some more alcohol ink because or alcohol because I ran out in my little bowl here. Put my hand inside the cup. Get my brush wet. Dab it just a tiny little bit because I need a little bit more alcohol on this to run along the side. So for this to create the structure here, how I did is I just started moving the ink. So as you can see, I have more alcohol on it and it moves the ink really nice. I just get really close to the line I already have there and just follow it along. If it's got a curve, follow with the curve. I mean, baseball bats aren't perfect, right? Um, the wood is just how it is. Um, I'll do a few ridges that are straight up and down. I'll do some that got a little bit of a curve to it. But what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the alcohol ink up following that ridge and it's literally pushing the ink to the side of my brush to the left hand side of my brush right now. And I just follow that ridge and it's creating a definition right next to that. So it's making it darker. It's creating ridges in between. Um, so you need your brush really wet for this section of it. Not super wet, but enough 
for the ink to stay. This really dark one was multiple passes as I was blowing on it to get it that dark. So just keep pushing. And then you get the ridge as dark as you want it. You get ridges next to it or lines next to it as much as you want. So this is another way to be creating your baseball bat lines um, instead of going over with a brush because the brush strokes, you know, you're going to see them. So I still have um, color on here. I could ever so lightly go over these white sections. And you'll see that it darkens up some of the areas that are already dark because they're sticking up higher and it's grabbing the color on the brush. Only time you don't want to do that is when you have too much alcohol on your brush can you know, just brush all those brush strokes that you worked hard on so I usually save that towards the end and then I'll go in with a little tiny brush uh, dabbing on a palette or something and then adding some more color and definition in there but for the most part this is how I do my baseball bats it's pretty easy um, I think it's the most fun because you can just sit there and create and imagine what a baseball bat looks like. I don't like sports. I don't know what a baseball bat looks like. I had to look it up and I just did it. And it's all about creating what your envision of something is. So having fun with it. And then so right here you can see it's pushing the ink up and it's starting to dry. So that's when you need more alcohol. Don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of... Oh my gosh, I'm going to mess it up. Just stay out of the area you don't want to touch. Take it easy, take your time, make sure you're not in a rush. And see how it's starting to create this nice wood grain. So just play with it, have fun with it. Um, you mess up, literally all you need to do is take alcohol. Let me show you. rubbing alcohol on the corner of that, you mess up a spot, you want to get rid of it. So let's say right here, I don't, this area I don't like, right? Literally just wipes away and it, you can start fresh. So I mean, even if you're in a section, like I don't even know where that pink came from. There's some pink on there. I don't know where it's from, but it wipes right off with alcohol. So it's easy, as you can tell. I'm almost done with it. Um, most of my baseball bats. And look, there's one piece of glitter. Hello. Most of my baseball bats usually have three.